Hate to break it to you, if this is what you think when you hear the word fame, you're probably old. Now, it's all about TikTok, baby. Here's the story of how this guy went from Colombia to Kenya and got 6 million views. So, that trip started going to Mexico. Woo! Mexico! Welcome to Mexico, particularly Mexico City. Now unfortunately, when a lot of you hear the word Mexico, the media makes you think about this. And I met up with some friends from Germany. I had a horrible mustache throughout that entire phase. Being in such a large mega metropolis like this may make you forget about the history, but thankfully you can drink what the Aztecs called the nectar of the gods, which is alcoholic, my favorite type. Uh, and everyone told me to get rid of it, but uh, the more people told me that they hated it and that I should get rid of it, the more I wanted to keep it. <laughs> Let you guess what substance that's like. <laughs> this is the pure natural. Look at that. Thick, gooey. Then eventually, uh, those friends left. They went back to Germany and traveled on. And then uh, I decided to go to Colombia. There, uh, I had previously met a friend named Joseph, who was a, what you would call an Instagram influencer. That boy is always running around with his phone out, chatting with people. He speaks like five words of Spanish and he uses them over and over again. Gracias, mor, mi amor. <laughs> Salud. Yeah, he's the one that like really pushed me to make more and more and more content. This will keep following. Trip to South America is never complete without a trek through some bush. <laughs> I feel like a fucking viper. Oh fuck! At one point, we decide to go uh, to this place called Comuna 13, or like Comuna 13. They used to be one of like the most dangerous places in Colombia. <laughs> hot. Was it really hot? <laughs> I was in Medellin four or five years ago and I came here and it was not as lively as it is now. The city's changed a lot. Way more gringos, way more action. This is dude, this is totally like justified. <laughs> Turn it into a theme park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is this? Oh, nice. I'm gonna get one too. Hola. Si, I want to meet a lot of people. Si.
think I would do that. <laughs> Always dancing, always doing salsa, always getting asked to do salsa with old ladies. <laughs> Got a bit bored, and then we're like, Joseph, why don't we just wander through the streets, like really far from this sort of controlled touristy area, and then find a bar. That was hilarious. They love it. <laughs> the crowd loved it. They were all tapping me on the shoulder. I was like, what the fuck? Did I hit someone? <laughs> They're like, move, we're dancing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, make, make more room. Why <laughs> not? <laughs> Watch out, bro, I'm coming in hot. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll go next, I'll go next. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, So we wandered, found a bar, had some beers. <laughs> and then from there, we got the idea, like, why don't we, uh, try to find something that no tourist would ever go to. So, me and Joseph being the total idiots that we are, just figured out how to get there by public transport, and we went. Hola, Hola. You get into this cable car, Joseph's being his typical self and chatting and kind of messing with everyone, acting like, oh, is Camino Trece over here? Con permiso. Uh, la Camino Trece. Ay, está San Javier. San Javier. Pero tienen que coger el tranvía. He's joking. He's joking. Uh, <laughs> 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 Then we just get off, and then we just go walking. It's nice and chilly. <laughs> Since we're up in the mountains. Immediately I'm like, all right, this place is, this feels weird, there's nobody around, we're totally gonna get robbed or something, I don't know, this is probably a bad idea. Where do you wanna go? It's a little quiet for my comfort. <laughs> series Narcos right here. Really? <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely like the neighborhoods they portray here, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah, there's the music gun. Fuck yeah, go <laughs> There's a bar close by, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs>
Este buen caldo. Buen caldo. Caldo. Ahora tía. That looks delicious. Hey, oh, rico. We're partying with them and then at one point they're just like, uh, are you guys really gonna keep walking down? Cause it's not safe at all. And we're like, all right, cool. Like you should go back. So we called it, we went back uh, and it was a pretty successful trip. But after that and having a good experience with that, I then just went back to traveling on my own, living out of Airbnbs and working my shitty sales jobs. The sad reality of what my life has become. The problem with sales is it's extremely unfulfilling. You kind of feel like you're just bothering people all day. You don't really care about what you're selling. Everyone who says like, oh, I can sell as long as I'm passionate about it. You're never going to be passionate about anything someone's going to hire you to sell. Like, get over that. <laughs> sure, hello there. Uh, hello there, sir. Oh, uh, yes. Hello. Oh, yes, I'm just the man you want to see. Have I got a you bargain are? for you today? Do you? I don't know. Of course I do, and it only costs one nickel. You have a nickel, don't you? Uh, a nickel, yeah. Yes, well, just, yes, just I, I think I you do. have a nickel? Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Then I can show you what you want to buy. Well, what is are it? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. It's right in my pocket here. What? What you want to buy is this. One great big piece of pumpkin seed candy. There it is. Isn't a, that a beauty? A big piece of pumpkin seed candy? That's right. What do you say about that? Uh, yuck. Yuck. I had decided pretty impulsively to just quit my job and try to figure out something better to do. So I'm in the middle of Colombia. At one point I actually got robbed at gunpoint. One look, one look in those guy's eyes, I knew I was in trouble. It was right at this point. I couldn't run that way. <laughs> I couldn't run this way. They flip around right here on their bikes. And then yeah, I'm sitting there trying to figure out what I should do with my life. And while I'm there, I'm thinking, you know what, last time I was in Kenya, I went there trying to accomplish a dream of becoming a YouTuber. And I'd go make these like interesting videos that nobody would watch, basically nobody would watch. I'd get like 100 or 200 views, but I would clip them into like 30 seconds to a minute, and then those would get like thousands of people watching. So yeah, I, I went there and I was like, I don't even care about making money right now. I've got a bit of savings that can last me uh, some time. Uh, I want to do something that I can actually be proud of that I think is interesting and I decided that I was going to go back and become famous on TikTok in Kenya. <laughs> So the first video I decided to do was stealing a concept from the Cheeky Boyas. Take a painting and put it in a museum. Okay. okay. This is where they go and they ask their audience to tell them what they should do next. Then they make a video about it. It's usually like the most interesting idea. Then they, at the very end, ask what should we do next. Give yourself a tattoo on a roller coaster. Okay. okay. So a tattoo on the ride? Oh my. You're ready. Just keep tattooing. So I thought, why don't I do this option to get a bunch of comments, because that's what makes TikToks go viral, or at least that's an easy way to do it, uh, as well as to get like cool ideas of stuff to actually do. So I did that, posted the first video, and was amazed at how well it did. Hello, Kenya. I'm back. Two years ago, I came to Kenya with the dream of making videos. It doesn't matter how simple the idea or how crazy it is, the weirder and wilder the better. Just drop it in the comments right now and I'll take it and I'll do it. Let's go. We got like hundreds of thousands of views, thousands and thousands of comments. Um, and then, yeah, I just started doing videos based on what people asked. One was going to like this very particular football team's match. Try to attend a football match. Okay. I just figured out where the stadium was when a game was going on, showed up, looked for like who looks like maybe the rowdiest group or just like whatever group is not posh and sitting in box seats. Oh. And then we celebrated on the way out. Hallelujah. That's amazing. I don't know what I should do next. Did one on this like type of food.
that's delicious. Ran like a half marathon. You can see the finish. We did it. And then there was a video that I didn't expect, but the one that was really gonna go crazy viral and kind of change it all. everywhere. Donation boxes for clothing and shoes. Notice right here, this is not a charity. Donations made here support a for-profit business and are not tax deductible. Talking about how donated clothes end up resold in Kenya was the video series I didn't expect but really made everything take off. I'm gonna donate this shirt to clothe some poor African children for free. I'm such a good person. In reality, it's more of just a really big business. Hundreds of millions of dollars, actually, of clothes getting shipped before they arrive at a market like Kikoma. Yeah. Yeah. You can see, happy Canada Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's from Canada. <laughs> you have seen, that's the ironing. Everything we are here, from Tumba. <laughs> Need proof this stuff is coming from the US? Just look at all of these. Washington College. Jeff Moore, LLC. Bronx High School, look at that. Hello, <laughs> Junior High School. <laughs> but like a lot of things, the guys at the very end hustling day to day actually are working in a very tough business. The business is so very fucking tough. Today we just like getting like three dollars a day. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's the what we can make, three dollars a day. I had no idea that people in Kenya didn't realize that those clothes were originally donated. No, I knew that people in the US didn't realize that this was the process, but I had no idea how widespread this is. It's actually in multiple different countries, they're selling in multiple markets, and just how outraged both Kenyans and Africans, as well as people in the countries donating would be. And it went immediately viral, overnight. I remember watching it and just seeing like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands more of views to the point we actually get 4 million views. I had like these big meme page, like Instagram pages that have millions and millions of followers hitting me up to see if they could post it as their own reel. Uh, I was like, nah, I, I wanna post it on my own. Uh, but yeah, that one went crazy and that was like a total game changer. It was like, holy crap, I came out here to get famous, to do something that would go viral and I've already hit it like a few videos in. All right, I've made it to my first media appearance as Roaring Travel. This guy hit me up to come be on his podcast. Now, do you feel the pressure now that you've already had one video that's clocked three million? Do you feel the pressure now that all the other videos outperform, even if it's not equally, but slightly close to that number? This is the first time I experienced <laughs> the curse of something going viral. <laughs> It's the greatest <laughs> high on earth. I never saw it coming. Yeah. And then I, it's like, I, I've barely, I think I've uploaded like two videos since. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure. Because, because now I'm like, uh, yeah. unless there's a real perp, like one video that did terribly, but it was about the woman doing the cooking marathon. It was a big, that was a cool one. Oh, you went for that yeah, as well, right? Yeah, I was there. And that mm -hmm. was, I was like, I didn't even care how that performed. That was a cool thing to do. I yeah. want to tell that story. So if I want to tell it, it's interesting. But now, the, like, like this week, I'm sitting here, I'm like, should I just do the low-hanging fruit of a street food, me trying street food? Because I know Kenyans will love it. Yeah. I don't really, like, I'm not that excited about making it. Yeah. And that's why I decided to do, like, let me go more in depth on the video I did yesterday. But I have found that there's a bit of the curse. Yeah. Because now it's... Uh, Pressure. Uh, yeah, I wanted to post another video that was on the same topic, but talking about... Uh, the kind of waste it creates and some of the downsides to it just to make people aware. I told you that this shirt for sale was originally donated by an American expecting it to go to you for free. Let's start from the beginning. Americans don't realize donated clothes are taken by for-profit companies and sold to African markets. And that's how it ends up here in Kenya where someone like me can buy this for 400 bob. I think is a good price. In reality, the millions of dollars of profit were already made before we'd even reached this point by the foreign companies that are selling all these clothes, as well as the Kenyan government that are taxing them as they're importing. But there's a big problem. Half the clothes that arrive here aren't even sellable. That one's stained, look at that. Many are bad quality and a lot are just too big to fit Kenyans and need to be resized and trimmed down. This creates a crap ton of waste that, given the government's failure to provide a proper dump site, are either just burned or more likely dumped in the Nairobi River. 
They call this the Valley of Waste. Tell me what you think about all this in the comments. Posted that one on TikTok. Again, it got a lot of viewership. I got a lot of positive responses from that as well. As, as well. And then it did pretty well on, on Instagram. But at that point, uh, I'm always running out of money. Uh, everyone thinks just because I'm American that I have a ton of money and it's constantly coming in. But I usually live off savings and I have a lot of debt because I am American. So the money burns quick. So I decided to go uh, over to Uganda, kind of finish out the project, uh, made some videos there, got in touch with a local influencer. Uh, he got me into actually doing uh, a bungee jump into the Nile River, which was pretty cool. Derek Sinyoni, dare me to bungee jump here in Jinja, Uganda. Uganda, Pearl of Africa. All right, five, four, three, two, one, bungee! Uh, after that, kind of had to find a job, return back to the USA, uh, learn the lessons of how fun it was to actually make videos and do something that was cool and get away from sales. Still ended up back in sales. But now, now I get to reveal where I actually am. I'm here <laughs> in the French Alps. We're in a small town uh, called Anese. I never pronounce it right. The bottom of the Alps. And I'm on my way back to Africa right now. I'll be landing in Uganda uh, in a few days. And the uh, entire plan from here is something that Rory in the future and Kampala will pick up from here. Hello everybody. <laughs> What's up bro? <laughs> and welcome back to beautiful Uganda. It's where I'm at now. I'm hopefully trying to break the cycle of running out of money and having to leave to make some more and then coming back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Part of that mission is I need to figure out how to make money. It's gonna be a journey that I'm documenting and posting here on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Uh, I've kicked it off with a TikTok video asking people to tell me about the different hustles that they have, and then I'm gonna go around making videos with them. So that's the whole idea. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend you watch this one next. It was a good one.